I am here today talking with my friend Crystal. Um, we have become friends years ago volunteering in the nursery together. We often, if you see us chatting, we're in the halls at church. She is one of the people I love to go to for advice on mental health and with us talking about emotions, I just wanted to sit down with her and just hash out a little bit of a conversation on mental health. So Crystal, most of the time when you and I are talking, we in the years past have hung out in the nursery and chatted and now we meet in the hallway at church. So I come to you with for advice and with issues I'm having. So what exactly is your job title? So I work at Pleasant View, but I work for Burrell Behavioral Health. And I work as a school-based support specialist within the school. Okay. And I have about 30 kids on my caseload okay. that I work with. Because I know we're always talking about our kids, but now you have these other kids that you're taking care of, right? And I know that you're dealing with a lot with the COVID stuff and with kids dealing with depression and anxiety. Not too long ago, I was going through a time in my life where I knew that things just weren't right and I didn't know what to do with it. And so I went to my doctor and brought it up. And so she immediately recommended counseling. And so now that I've gone to counseling, now I have kids and they have things bring, they, they bring up that they're struggling with. And it's hard to know when to do, when we need to take them or when we don't need to take them, how to deal with all of this. So when I went to the counselor, I was like, can you just explain to me what depression is? Because everyone uses it and what exactly does it mean? So would you be willing to explain from your working, like from your viewpoint, what depression is? Sure. So when someone is depressed, they've lost all hope in the future and they usually have lost interest in all the activities that they used to enjoy. Maybe they want to sleep a lot, they don't want to be around people anymore, or they eat too much or eat too little. Okay. Yeah. So then the other hot topic is anxiety. Mm -hmm. So how does anxiety differ from depression? So anxiety is more of when a person <clears throat> has, when they worry excessively and then they avoid certain social situations or they're worried about a future situation that they might be facing. Right. So depression and anxiety kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So the, if you think, if you get diagnosed or you think you're depressed or you have anxiety, does that mean that you may have a mental illness? Not necessarily because anxious and depressed are both emotions. So you can feel anxious about something. Like for instance, if Pastor Ellen ever asked me to speak in front of the whole church. It makes me anxious. Right. So it doesn't mean that I have a mental illness. Right. So if a person has anxiety to the extent of it affects their daily living activities, then I would say that's more of a mental illness. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Well, in our family, we have all been to counseling at this point um, for one reason or another. And my daughter was, my youngest was the last one who hadn't been to counseling. So she liked to tell everyone, I'm the last lures who hasn't had to go to counseling. So you can imagine her surprise when I'm like, eh, I think you're going to counseling. So I'm just curious, even though depression and anxiety are talked about so much in society and the kids are learning about it at school, I mean, it seems like even young kids know, have some thought about what depression or anxiety is. Is there a stigma attached for the kids who are getting called to the counselor, have to go to counseling? Like, how is that affecting them? Well, I can only speak from what I'm seeing within the school, and I'm not seeing any stigma at all. The, there's a culture to where the kids understand that these kids go and see a counselor, and nobody's getting made fun of, and I love that. And then we have groups with the kids, which really helps them to feel like they're not alone. Right, right. So they see that other kids are going through the same things. And oftentimes the teachers even call the kid out and say, hey, go to Miss Crystal, you know, or Miss Lindsay, the other um, mental health worker. So they know that we work with rural behavioral health. Right. So, right. Yeah. And that's nice that it's right there at school. Um, so if we're at home and we're talking with our kids about different things they're dealing with in life, how do we know when it's a good time for them to get help, whether they need to see the school counselor or get counseling outside of school? Are there certain signs we can look for that we're like, this is a little different than normal? 
Yeah. So they say that in children, depression comes up differently. <clears throat> it's more of irritability and anger outburst. And on top of that, if you see them having difficulty in school, maybe the grades are dropping or they're secluding themselves in their bedrooms beyond the typical teenage behavior right. and maybe bouts of crying or not wanting to eat or things like that, I would be concerned. Okay, so now with my kids, we have conversations about what's going on in their lives and we talk about how to cope with those things, but I'm just wondering how we could be more proactive with our kids and more nurture and teach good um, mental health instead of waiting until something happens and then we're kind of scrambling. So do you have any suggestions on how we can nurture our child's mental health? Sure. I wrote a, th a few things <laughs> down. <laughs> so I think that it would be, be important to praise them any chance that you get <clears throat> because this will help them develop their self-talk and their self-esteem. Teach them to see the positive in every situation and within people. Teach them to be optimistic. Encourage them to talk about their feelings and emotions and what, what they go through. Because so many people are, and kids need to learn that you need to talk about what you go through. Not hold it all in because right. it's unhealthy. Um, encourage crying as a healthy expression and release of feelings. Because there's also this stigma that if you're a male or you're a man that it's not good to cry. Mm -hmm. When actually it is healthy to cry no matter the gender. Right. Um, look for books to read to them to develop their emotional intelligence. Teach them empathy. Expose them to other cultures and people who are different th from them. Expose them to others who have it worse off than they do. <clears throat> Encourage them to help others and teach them not to compare themselves because comparison is deep of joy. Those are, that's a good starting list. Um, I saw that you have a link that we can click on that we can find books that will help teach our kids uh, empathy and help to get that mental health IQ up. So that'll be a good start. And you also have another list that we can use of other ways to um, nurture your child's mental health. So we're gonna put those on this on the website and people can have access to that. So I really enjoy chatting with you. Well, good chatting <laughs> it's with been you fun too. talking about mental health, even though my children are older than yours, you've always been the person like I try to seek out and get advice from. So it's good to have this talk. So thank you. Thank you.